Good morning, good morning, good morning, Bridge family. So excited to be with you again, finally. It's been a long week. These weeks are feel actually they feel the weeks that feel like they're getting faster and faster. Like yeah. I don't know, maybe it's, I'm just crazy. <laughs> just getting locked up. Um, but man, there's been some exciting, exciting news that has been uh, announced. And it was this from President Trump on Friday, that church is essential. Yeah. And I was so excited to hear that, um, to hear that from the president of the United States. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not alive long enough to know every president in the United States, if they've ever said that. But in recent history, to hear a president say that, yeah. um, that church is essential, um, just kind of validated what so many of us believe, that we don't go to church because it's a social event. Right. We go to church because that's where we find our purpose, that's where we find our future, where we find our hope. And so I'm so excited that that he recognized yeah. that and him calling governors to say let's 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 open up churches yeah. or at least saying this that it is that it, by by the constitution you cannot close church mm. that you don't have the power to close church but we weren't really closed right and I don't think we ever really stopped having church right. <laughs> not that I don't think we didn't we didn't stop having mm-hmm. church church still went on you know the word was still preached not only at the Bridge Bunny Park but globally mm. right. you know uh, the the body of Christ. I believe has risen up um, and stood up like I've mm. never seen in right my now. in my lifetime. Right. Uh, uh, just getting together and making sure that we do whatever we can to get the gospel of Jesus Christ um, out into the world. And I think what better time than now, you know, to put it on the internet and use the internet in yeah. ways that we've really never taken taken advantage of before because this opportunity had never been presented to us before. Um, So all that to say, we're so thankful that we never had to stop having church, Mm -hmm. though we did have to have these, though we did have to stop the in-person meetings. We're so thankful that the word of God was still able to go out. People were, people's lives literally Mm -hmm. are still being changed in quarantine. God is still moving. Um, We're just so thankful uh, that though our lives have been, you know, seemingly put on hold, right? God doesn't see it that way. God yeah. has not been put on hold. Uh, and I hope that you see that in your life as well. Um, you know, whether it's in your family, your marriage, uh, your health, whatever. I hope that you've seen God be faithful to you uh, during this time as well. Yeah, that's so good. And so, of course, you know, I've been getting the questions. Hey, when are we having church again? <laughs> and I, I, I want to have church. Yeah. But what? I want us to be convinced of this one thing, like Amanda said, that, hey, when are we going to have church again? Like, we've never stopped. Yes. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. we have had, continue to have church. Sometimes we get attached to um, what's comfortable, mm-hmm. and we want to get back to comfortable. Yeah. Right? Go, it's comfortable, but familiar. But familiar, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so, I want to not lose heart of mission, right? So, yeah. we get mission and method mixed up. The service was a method to do the mission. Right. The, right. Our, our, the mission of the church was not to have services on Sunday mornings at Gilbert Elementary at 9 and 11. Right. The, the, our mission was this to, to lead people to live life to the fullest with God and with other people. That's mm-hmm. our mission. The method that we do that right now, it's online. Right. Maybe later it'll be online and in person. Yeah. Or whoever, whatever technology right. or whatever happens in the future, whatever God's leading. But, but, but I don't want us to mix up method and mission. Right. They're two different things. Right. They're separate things. And so when are we going to have church again? We never stopped. Come on. We never stopped. <laughs> Come on, somebody. People are still getting saved. Miracles are happening. Testimonies are still coming yes. in mid-quarantine. Yeah. Um, but when are we going to have in-person gatherings? That's a different question. Yes. And the president came in and he said, governors, you cannot make churches right. close. Um, which I love. But just because you can't make somebody doesn't mean that they necessarily should do it. So right. we're going to be um, prayerfully considering... As we have NASCAR outside. Uh, we're going to be uh, prayerfully uh, considering and seeking God and saying, God, when do you want us to open? Yeah. God, when is it? Like, no government can tell us to close or open. God, right. you, you are the pastor. You are the shepherd of this church. So, God, when do you want us to open? Mm-hmm. And uh, I've already sent out emails to the school districts to ask them, hey, are we going to be allowed to be in the building right now? Yeah. Or if, if the governor opens it up and we're ready to move in, but are the schools, is your school still closed so we can't rent out Gilbert Elementary? So right. there's a lot of variables to be that we're wrestling around with, but um, please be praying for us as a leadership team that we would do exactly what God wants to do. Yeah. I know we have our own preference and we have our own stance and there's people on the side of let's wait. There's people on the side of we should have never stopped. Yeah. And there's everyone in between. Yeah. Uh, not that one's more holy or less holy or more faith or less faith. Nothing like that. But I want our church to be part of the solution, not yeah, part of the problem. Yeah. I don't want the community to view us as, hey, those are the people that that, that help this quarant- or help this disease spread. I want to do it in a way where we can honor God, first and foremost. Yeah. But we can also honor people. Because 
Jesus said, man, the, these are the two greatest commandments. Love God and love people. Yeah. You can't love God and then hate people. Yeah. You're a liar. That's what the Bible says. You're a liar. Yeah. You have to love God and also love people. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that as a church? How do we love God? And how do we love people? And how do we best serve them right. and so please pray for us um but we will be coming out with an update soon mm -hmm. as soon as we hear back and we talk to the leadership team and we hear from the school and the city and yeah. the, the all these people all these organizations and more importantly when we hear from god about how we can best um serve our people that we will start having in-person gatherings mm -hmm. but church is not canceled has never been canceled will never be canceled because the gates of hades shall not prevail come on somebody Ooh, and so anyway we are excited uh for today's service uh we just want to give you a quick update at the beginning but um, there will be information to follow so please follow us on instagram uh, we'll be sending out some emails to keep you updated and we will also be sending out a survey and on this survey uh we want you to answer four quick questions just about how you feel where you're at with everything uh, in terms of services coming back mm -hmm. uh in person um, so if you could fill out that survey, um, there'll be a, a QR code going to pop up right now on your uh, screen. Um, you can uh, actually, no, 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 sorry, not going to come up right now. It's going to come up at the end of service. I don't want you to QR code and survey during worship. So QR code will come up at the end of service, um, but fill out that survey. And we'll also put in an email so you can get it on the yeah. email as well. Um, but please, please, please fill out that survey. Um, send it to your uh, people that you know in church um, so they can fill it out as well. Um, so we can best, best, best serve you guys, the people of the bridge. But we love you guys. Let's get ready for worship. So wherever you're at, if you can stand and join us as we sing out praises to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, at the God who is still on the throne, even in quarantine. Come on, somebody. We love you guys. Good morning, Bridge family. Welcome to church. I'm so excited to be with you guys. If you're here for the very first time, welcome. We are the Bridge. We love God and we love people. I wanted to share some scripture with you this morning, and it comes from Joshua 1.8. And the scripture is, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you shall make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. I wanted to just encourage you this morning not to give up on the things that you've been praying for and the stuff that you've been hoping for, the moves that you're praying that God makes in your life. Now's not the time to give up on those things. Now's the time to dig into your word and to meditate on the promises that God has for you. So as we worship, go ahead and lift your arms, kneel if you feel like you need to, and just give God all the worship that he is due this morning. Amen. Can't go back to the beginning. Can't control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle is the place where you promised to be I'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all I
Yes, you can. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you want. Will you meet me here again? One more time, guys. I'm not enough unless you come. Cause all I want
We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, God. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for the word that you've prepared for us, Lord God. Bless our church. Please bless our pastors, Sean and Amanda, Lord God. We thank you for them, Jesus. We thank you that they lead well and that they care for us, Lord God. We honor you today, King Jesus. In your mighty name, amen. Hey, Bridge family, man, what a powerful time in worship to be able to sit in God's presence or stand in God's presence and remind ourselves, man, that he is still in charge. Thank you, worship team, for still doing all that you guys do behind the scenes. Um, and it just it helps bring God's presence into our homes and how powerful it is. Uh, hey, real quick, want to remind you guys that there is our, a few ways to give here at The Bridge. Um, you can give online through our um, website, www.thebridgebp.com. You can give um through mail, um, you can email mark at thebridgebp.com and he'll send you the address so that way we can, um, you can send in if you wanna do a check that way. Or you can also do it through the app. And we actually also have, we started doing text to give. So you can uh, text and the information will be there on the screen below. Uh, and so uh, thank you guys for giving so faithfully um, to what God is doing here at The Bridge. It, it, it bl blows my mind that, that the people of God would be faithful because I've heard friends say, "Man, like our church, our giving's dropped. This has happened, that happened, all this stuff happened, and they're in a like a season of uh, or a mode of like, man, what do we do?" And hey, Sean, like, how, how how's your church doing? Man, our church is full of faithful people who believe God and the promises of God, and it feels so awesome to be able to stand up in front of people or have a conversation with people and say, "No, the the the, the people that I pastor believe God." And they believe that he's going to do the things that he said he was going to do. And we're going to stay faithful in doing what he's called us to do. And so thank, thank you for being faithful. And we've been able to help out families, help out people in need. This week we're able to help. Um, we usually, each year we do a, a, a celebration at Gilbert Elementary School, the place where we have our in-person gatherings. And uh, we celebrate um, the sixth graders that are graduating into junior high or promoting into junior high. We throw this big old party, we deck it out, we have confetti cannons, we decorate it, we cater food, we make them feel like they're like just all stars. And this year, obviously, we could not do that in person. But uh, the principal reached out, so we were still able to set up our pipe and drape inside. They came in with their social distancing, their masks, and they went up on stage and took a picture. We were able to give them um, um, gift cards to go eat at a uh, Chick-fil-A, we were able to get um, the school bought them water bottles. We were able to put their, their names on all the water bottles. Um, and so we just did, we're able to do all these extra things for the fifth and sixth graders because both grades are going to junior high next year. It's a bit of a long story. But anyway, uh, they're both able and we were able to do that because of your guys' generosity. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for being generous. Thank you for being faithful in what God has called you to do. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to, 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 to do life with you guys. Um, so let me pray over this offering as you guys give. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for making promises that we are learning about. Father, that come with the covenant that we are learning about. That you said that, that you, if we give to you what is already yours, that you will open up the windows of heaven and you will pour out such blessings that there will be room enough for us to contain them. And so, Father, would you be the God of this covenant? 
And as we give, would you do what you said you would do? God, open up the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing that there wouldn't be room enough for us to contain it, God. In any area of our lives where we need more of you, God, and the things that you bring, God, would you show up and show off, God? We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, quick announcements. We have uh, our Zoom calls happening for uh, youth, happening on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Uh, and you can email Amanda at thebridgebp.com. And we also have uh, kids Zoom calls happening on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. And you can email Melina at thebridgebp.com for that information. And just a quick reminder, there will be a QR code at the end of service. It will come up on the screen. Um, you can scan a quick picture of that. Um, you can fill out that survey. It would mean so much to us so we can better assist um, in this transition to having services back in person um, um, post-quarantine, post COVID-19, but we love you guys. I love you guys so much. And uh, let's get ready for the word. Hi, Bridge family. So excited to be with you once again online. Uh, but man, I'm so glad that we can still have church. Um, and I'm so thankful. I know we talked about it earlier, but I'm so thankful for what for what the president came out and said yeah. uh, on Friday. Friday, I think it was on Friday, he came out and just said that he said simply that churches are essential. Yeah. And so I, I just I just love that, that he recognizes that we are essential um, people part of our society in order to build people up and to encourage them a place to find a hope and a refuge and so uh, I'm just so so thankful that he sees that and uh, I'm so and I'm also thankful that we have technology that allows us even though uh, it would be unsafe to meet in, in, in person we're still able to have church yeah. online and so I think it's awesome and incredible and we're gonna continue the series that we've been on for uh, 27 weeks I'm just kidding. Oh uh, we uh, seven our sixth week now on uh, the Fight Club, Fight Club, and we're really talking about how to fight for the things that God has already won, already said that's ours, and so uh, I think it's just going to be a great, uh, today's, today's message is going to be great and really solidify um, the fact of, of the, that God is willing mm -hmm. to do what he said. Yeah. Many times we don't struggle with the fact that he can, but we struggle with, but will he do it for me? Right. And so I want to address that today. Um, but uh, in the series all, all together, we've been talking about, first two, we talked about blood covenant, what it is, what it looks like, all the different elements that are in it. Um, and then uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about fighting words. And we talked about how David had fighting words for Goliath. Um, and then we talked about having this, um, the word, the word, has said I'm talking about this like this love of fighting this love word that's in there where there's all these characteristics about God he's just he's merciful he's gracious but there's one characteristic that he's constantly overflowing in and it's this abundance of has said mm -hmm. this covenant love for me and for you yeah. and then last week we talked about the new fight how there is a, a, a new fight because when Jesus came he came and there was the old covenant but Jesus now took the old covenant that was only meant for the Jewish people mm -hmm. and now he now opened it up pretty much and made it available to us if we accept Jesus as our yeah. Lord and Savior. And so it's really uh, it's something special that he did. And uh, today we want to talk about, like I said, is God willing, but really all the other things that come with this new covenant. Right. Um, I, we're not going to exhaust the list today, but we're just going to start the, uh, the uh, conversation today um, uh, about what it looks like now and in, in, in our age to have these... Um, to have this God that God is willing and what is he willing to do right so today we're gonna uh, talk about and to start to show you how God cannot lie mm -hmm. like it's not just that uh, he can't but the fact that he also he right. won't you know he won't lie and so if we can catch this truth and believe the fact that God cannot lie mm -hmm. it should change everything uh, about your life it should covenant changes everything um, about NASCAR's back. <laughs> <laughs> They're out of quarantine. <laughs> I know. But a covenant should change everything, you know, about your life. And mm. we've said it probably every every week. Mm. But uh, this whole covenant and the fact that God cannot lie, it should sh it should change things in your families. It mm. should change things in your marriages. It should change things um, in your finances. It should change things with your health, uh, with your peace, um, mm. things concerning your future. You can absolutely start speaking things into existence or even talking, beginning a conversation with God about things that maybe you've never touched on before because now you have this confidence to know that, man, I know that God wants to and I know that God will, uh, wants to do it and I know that he will do it. So we, ho we hope today 
to convince you uh, of the fact that and make you 100 percent aware mm-hmm. you know the fact that god cannot lie and what this looks like for your life uh, in every area of your life yes yeah, so let's pray and we'll get started mm-hmm. father thank you so much for your word today father would you convince us of this one truth that you cannot and will not lie yes sir and so god if that's true, then that changes everything. Mm-hmm. And so, God, would you would you convince us today that what you said you fully intend to do, yes. God, despite what our circumstances and our decisions may have said, God, that you stand by your word and you stand by your promises. So, Holy Spirit, would you show us today? Would you would you would you allow us to open up your word and would you speak to us through your word? Yes, Lord. God, we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, in the spirit of lying. Uh, just- <laughs> Uh, I wanted to wanted to tell a quick story on uh, one time that I lied. Um, I know you're like, Sean, have you ever lied? Uh, it's happened on occasion. Uh, the one time I vividly remember um, was when I was in fourth grade and my dad probably remembers this. Uh, he might not. I don't know. Maybe he did because it was the one time I did something wrong. Oh I'm just my kidding. Gosh. Uh, but uh, I was in fourth grade and I don't know if it was a homework log or it was, to be honest, it was probably a reading log because I never read in school. <laughs> Um, and still graduated. But your uh, mom signed up on all those, so it probably wasn't that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I was supposed to get something signed. I didn't get signed. Homework, reading log, something. And uh, I had seen my dad sign many, many papers before. And so I was like, I'm just going to sit in class and I'm just going to give because the teacher's coming to buy desk by desk, row by row. And the pressure's mounting and I'm sweating and I'm shaking and I'm getting nervous. And I wanted to be a good student. I was a good student, so I wanted to uphold um, that standard for myself by lying. And so I, <laughs> I forged my dad's signature, right? And when you're in fourth grade, you're like, yeah, this is like pretty much my dad's it's signature. It's legit. Like, this is legit. <laughs> like, this is pretty much the past. Like, I just will fool anybody. F- flash forward to when I'm a teacher now, and I see a, a, was it, a junior high, eighth grade student forge their parent's signature. I know immediately it's forged, right? Like, there's no way your parent wrote that. Like, <laughs> there is not a chance, right? So flashback now i'm in fourth grade i'm feeling like the chant and the teacher says did you is is this your dad's signature oh yeah that's a signature she said are you sure yeah she's like okay i'm gonna have to call your dad because i don't think this is his signature and i'm like (laughs) not my dad right just like just getting like just these pictures of me getting whooped right and just like no but i'll never forget the reason it stuck out to me because i was like man i will never lie like that i mean obviously i lied after that but i will never lie like that ever again about my dad like because i was so terrified i'm like i want to get in so much trouble no please right and so it, it just marked me like you cannot lie yeah. you know about this and what about you babe are you are you a good kid or no uh i was a pretty good kid but i do remember i mean it, it wasn't a lie i kind of just like told on oh. myself uh we were at the grocery store and we we grew up going to like the hispanic grocery stores Mm -hmm. because if you don't know i'm mexican (laughs) um but we went to the grocery store and if you know and you shop at mexican grocery stores at least back in the day they used to have um uh candies like just out and you could buy candy by the pound and so you know the little um scale scale thing that you would put uh, the fruit in you so you put it in the the candy in there and I just took one little candy one little butterscotch candy uh-huh. and uh, I remember I had it in my pocket and all throughout the store I'm like oh my gosh I'm gonna get in trouble and I mean I was a good kid I'm the first child mm-hmm. usually the first child is like the oh. <laughs> the, the the more well behaved more honest mm-hmm. child and so we get out of the store and my conscience is eating me alive. And I'm like, I tell my mom, mom, I stole this candy. And she was so upset. <laughs> she was so disappointed. Like told me if I, mean, I keep, how could you? Uh, yes, if I keep like doing that. that, like I'm going to go to jail. And so she dragged me, not literally dragged me, but she made me go back into the store with her. And she called the manager and said, my daughter has something to tell you. And I ha- literally had to turn in this one little butterscotch candy. And the manager's like, oh, it's okay. And my mom was like, no, it's not okay. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know? So it was just like, I mean, it wasn't a yeah. lie. You know but... what's so funny is that, I, this isn't part of our notes, but you, you do that with Eden. So sometimes Eden takes, they'll go into a store and not on purpose, maybe on purpose. I don't know. Maybe she's One a One time she's done it on purpose. And she, she, she'll take something. Sometimes we don't even know she grabs right. it. Right. Like she doesn't ask, like it's just, or sometimes they'll throw stuff in the car and we'll buy it. But 
So yeah. then she just takes it. And one time she took <laughs> it, and uh, a man's like, you gotta go back, Eden. And she went back to the worker, here, my, my daughter and Eden, sorry, I took this, right? And this big old thing. And this other time we were at the Citadel, and Eden took like a wallet. A ring. A ring or something. And, and I'm like, look, babe. And she's like, oh my gosh, we gotta go back. And I'm like, just give me the ring. I go back and I just put it in the store. And like, you didn't tell them that, that they took it? And I was like, no one needs to know. It's back. We didn't steal it. Like, no one's mad at us. But anyway, now it makes sense why you always make her go and like have this yeah, moment it's of justice like, oh anyway uh <laughs> let's get back to the notes um oh hey, we're gonna start today's message and I'm, I'm excited because this whole thing started with this man named abram who then got his name changed to abraham mm. and when god when god said that he called him first abram and said hey abram come out of your land look and he says this look up at the sky the sky see all the stars that are in the sky that's how many descendants that you're gonna have and so it, it, immediately, this is where we, we, we where we were started like covenant, where we're saying, man, God came and he made promises yeah. to to um, to uh, Abraham. And the Bible says that when God said you're going to have as, as many descendants as there are stars in the skies, the Bible says that Abraham believed him, mm -hmm. and it was accounted to him for right. righteousness. Yeah. Then the next thing God promises, He says this, and this land that you see, it's full of all these people: the Amorites, the Hittites, the Kenizzites, the Perizzites, the you know all those other Zites. And it is said that I'm, I'm going to give you this land. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and then he says, Abraham says this and he says, but God, how do I know? Yeah. Right. In the first instant, I'm going to give you all these descendants. Abraham believed and was counted in the righteousness. The second time, I'm going to give you all this land. And instead of him believing right away, he does the most human thing possible. And he asks this about God, but God, how do I know? Yeah. And that's when God said, bring out the animals. Mm -hmm. And Abraham doesn't ask, God, what are the animals for? Right. He knows what's going on. Right. Okay. God's about to make covenant with me meaning this he's gonna swear that he's gonna do it so how do i know god you're gonna do it because you're gonna swear in blood to do it and so today i want to look at that question we're gonna narrow in on that question how shall i know mm -hmm. i mean i i know even for myself i felt like like, like i've asked those yeah asked those questions before like the even very human thing to yeah ask. like even yeah. when i want like even praying for healing like god like how do i know that you're gonna right. heal like or for finance god how do i know that you're gonna provide or um future god like how do you know the kind of future like the plans that you have for mm -hmm. me that they really are good that they really yeah. and not just like a wishful prayer but god how do i know yeah how do i know and so i want to i want to um dive into that question because sometimes we do things that we think disqualify right. us or we've done things that we felt like disqualify us or mm -hmm. i've wasted 10 to 15 20 30 years of my life right. not doing what i felt like god's called me to do when i was younger yeah. and i felt like it's wasted and i, I want to speak to that because that same question you would probably ask yourself mm -hmm. as well like god how do i know yeah despite the mistakes despite the dumb things god like i'm not good enough god i messed up again god i i, I haven't been reading god i haven't yeah. prayed or whatever your excuse or the reason you feel like disqualifies you I, I want us to know today that the things that you think disqualify us cannot supersede or exceed the covenant that God has made with exactly. you. Exactly. And so I want to convince you today of that question, how shall I know? I want to talk to you about how God answered that question. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I've messed up so much. So God, how, how do I know that you're going to, we're going to answer that question. Today. Yeah. Oh God, I, I, I've wasted so much time. No, no, no. I want to answer God, that God, that God's still going to do that. How shall I know? And we're going to talk yeah. about that. Um, today and so I want to uh, show you that how it was God's intention when Abraham what it meant when when Abraham said how shall I know and God brought out the animals I want to look at that deeper and what that really I know it meant covenant but mm -hmm. diving even deeper yeah. um, into what that means today yeah so let's jump to uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and we're gonna read from verses 9 through 18 and we'll skip around a little bit um, here and there but let's start at verse 9 Hebrews chapter 6 verse 9 and it says uh, dear friends even though we're talking this way we don't really uh, I'm sorry we really don't believe it applies to you we are confident that you are meant for better things that come with salvation and I want to pause there because it says this this little phrase at the end of that sentence and it says uh, you're meant for better things things that come with salvation mm -hmm. so like there's benefits mm -hmm. you know like when when sean and i uh want to go out out all, like on a nice date mm -hmm. you know maybe for like our anniversary or a celebration which, Two weeks. yeah which is hey. actually coming up <laughs> uh, uh or like a celebration or something and he says hey babe like let's go to this really nice uh our or our favorite steakhouse i know immediately what i'm gonna get mm -hmm. when i go to the steakhouse let me tell you something i don't think about the sides i don't think about the scalloped potatoes usually i don't think about like the asparagus i don't think about like the size i really just think about the steak and mm. the lobster tail <laughs> <laughs> so 
that I'm going to get. Uh, but, you know, they're talking in, in, in this um, uh, scripture in, in verse 9, it says things that come with salvation. When we go to these restaurants, our th- our food does come with sides, or we order sides. <laughs> it usually doesn't come with it, but it, we order sides that are going to accompany our meal. What it's saying here is that salvation, that's like your, your big meal, like your steak, you know, your entree and your lobster tail or whatever. Whatever you like. Sean doesn't do that seafood. But there are more things. It's not just salvation that comes. It, it, though we're thankful and though we, you know, we're mm. super um, appreciative of what Jesus did for oh, us, yeah, for the sure. price that he paid for us to have salvation, he's saying it doesn't stop there. There's more. There are benefits mm. to you, uh, for you um, that accompany salvation. Mm, that's good. So let's skip, uh, let's skip down to verse 11. Um, it says, our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope uh, for will come true. Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. I love what it says. It says, don't... Uh, what is it? So don't become spiritually dull mm. and indifferent. And pretty much what it's saying is like, don't become sluggish. Mm. Don't become like, right. just like whatever lackadaisical, you know, about your faith. Don't just mm. walk around like it's not a big deal. You know, don't walk around aimlessly. Uh, walk around with intention. Walk around like you, um, like you have like a purpose. Like you're, yeah. you have a goal that you're shooting for. And it says to be on it. You know, to make sure that you're mm. on it. To, to make sure that you're focused. Because let me tell you something. Many times, the enemy won't immediately come into your life and try to destroy you. Mm. Though the Bible says that in John 10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. A lot of times, that's not his first tactic. His first tactic could very easily be Mm. to distract you. Mm. To distract you. I don't know about you. I get distracted very easily on my phone. (laughs) <laughs> I, you know, I could be on the yeah. Bible app and then all of a sudden an Instagram notification mm-hmm. comes up uh, or, you know, for Sean, for uh, Pastor Babes, uh, uh, sports. I mean, not right now because, dun-na, dun-na, yeah. <laughs> because sports are like on pause, yeah. but you know, something could come up on your phone or something could be on the TV or whatever. And the enemy doesn't have to destroy you. Mm-hmm. He can just distract you to get you off course. But I love what the end of this scripture says. And what it's really telling us to do, it says to follow the example of those who are, who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and because of their endurance. Another um, translation says, imitate those who through faith and patience in, have already inherited mm. the promises of God. And I know that that's something that Sean and I, um, we, we, we strive to do is like we look at, you know, we look at people's mm. lives and we say, you know, ha- is God moving in their lives? And not just like, is there favor on them? But are they the ones putting in the work? Are they the ones being faithful? Mm. Are they the ones uh, cutting things out of their lives that are not necessarily beneficial to their relationship, you know, with them and God? Are there, look, uh, we look at their kids, mm. you know, are their yeah. kids serving the Lord? And we get close to those people. We ask them questions. Mm. We say, how is, how, how, how did you do it? Yeah. You know, what is going on? Because we want that. We want that for our marriage. We want a growing, thriving, healthy marriage. Uh, we want that for our children. We want that for our finances. Mm-hmm. You know, we want that for our future. We want that um, for, for who we are. And we know that here it says, imitate those who through faith and patience um, have inherited the promises of God. That's so good. And I think I think as I've gotten older, um, I used to be impressed by like the wow. Like, wow, yeah. like how, how like big that is or how famous or whatever. And now I'm impressed by people who have done something consistently for like 30 or 40 years. Yeah. Like when I see people that are older and they're like, we've been married for 50 years. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Like that is incredible. Yeah. Like I need you to, like I need to ask you a thousand questions right <laughs> now on how you handled every season yeah. of your life. Yeah. Like when I see people that are patient, that are long suffering, um, to me, I'm like, man, those are the people that I want to, I want to gravitate towards because right. it's easy to be hot for a moment, yeah. but man, to be, to, to be on fire for a long time, yeah. that's the people, all the people I want to be around. And that's the people that God says, those are the ones that inherit the promises exactly. that are faithful, that are patient, that are faithful, that are patient. Mm-hmm. And so, um, moving on verse 13, next verse, it says this, for example, there was, there was God's promise to Abraham since there was no one greater to swear by God took an oath in his own name saying, I will certainly bless you and I will multiply your descendants uh, beyond number. 
Then Abraham waited patiently and he received what God had promised. So there's there's this promise going on and when they when they made blood covenants, they would swear by an oath, right? We, we do this in court, they say blah 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 and so help you God or yeah. so or so help me God, right? So we're swearing by someone greater. Yeah. Now we shouldn't be swearing God's name, you know what I mean? But I'm not talking about that. But <laughs> in a covenant you would swear by someone and saying, If I don't, then this person's gonna handle business. Yeah. Right. And so God, he's saying, I can't swear by someone higher. Right. I can't talk about like God squared, right? Or like, <laughs> had to be a math, right? God, God something. And like, no, they, he, he's the highest. So he sweared by himself. Yeah. Like he's, he's the highest. Yeah. 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 And so he, he swore by himself. And then I love verse 15. It says this. And then Abraham waited patiently. Mm-hmm. Wait. And when I, when I read that, I think in America and myself, I'm like, waited patiently. Like a good two weeks. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, God, you got two, a year, like a year would be outrageous, yeah. but I would do it. Okay. But it would be out, like, you better have the best promise. This guy made it decades. Yeah. Decades for a promise. He yeah. waited patiently. Sean, what does it look like to have faith? Sometimes it looks like, man, you're on the mountaintop beating your chest and I know God will. And sometimes it looks like you're barely hanging on, but yeah. you're patient. Yeah. Not that one's greater, not that one's weaker, but that you're patient throughout the whole thing so i don't know what you've been believing for but man may this verse encourage you and then abraham waited patiently Mm -hmm. if you're believing for a family member to come to know to to, to know jesus and then abraham waited patiently you've been waiting for that business to start succeeding and then abraham waited patiently you've been believing for healing and health over your body and then abraham waited patiently he waited until the promise came to pass. Yes. And we know the story of Abraham. He did make a mistake. He had a son named Ishmael. And yeah. I think that kind of messed up the timeline for him getting his promise. But neither here nor there, he still waited patiently yeah. for the promise that was sent to him. Uh, verse 16. Now when the people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it. And without any question, the oath is binding. God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could perfectly uh, could, could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it's impossible for God to lie, right? So we talk about this. Verse 16, they come into covenant. God can't call on someone else, so he calls on himself because mm-hmm. there's no one greater than him. Verse 17, and God also bound himself. Yeah. People say this, and actually I've said this, and I've come to realize that it's a a false statement to say uh like if you look at it a certain way god people say god can do anything i understand it he's mm-hmm. sovereign god can do everything but god cannot lie right right so he can do everything well he can't lie well, obviously he can't do evil he can't mm-hmm. do bad things like he's not going to do those things because he's good but he cannot lie meaning this he, he he cannot do anything that's outside of his promise he can't and the bible says this verse 18 so god has given us these two things and i want to title this message this the one two punch the boom boom right? <laughs> you see what my life's like I'm just kidding <laughs> boom boom right the boom the one two punch right the hook the jab or however you say I'm not a boxer obviously you can tell I'm not a boxer <laughs> but the one two punch is this God's given us two things to keep us 100% sure that he will do what he promised yeah. to do and what is it he gave us his oath aka this he gave us his word he gave us promises in his word that say this I am binding myself to this yeah. I will not act outside of this whatever this says is what I have to do yeah. I'm not going to be different than what this says. If you see someone claiming God is do some, doing something that's not in this book, it's not God that's doing it, right? Some people say, oh, they, they oh, well, God got me sick. No, 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 God doesn't get people sick. Yeah. There's an enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy because the word says that by his stripes we are healed. He's in the healing business. Yeah. He's in the bringing wholeness business. God isn't in the business of destroying your life. Right. There's another person who's in the business of destroying your life. And so God has bound himself by two things. One, his word. Mm -hmm. And number two is this, the covenant that he made by blood. Yeah. He says, says here, verse verse 18, God has given us both his promise and his oath, a.k.a. this. He's given us both his covenant, the covenant comes with promises, Mm -hmm. and his oath, his word. Mm -hmm. He's given us these two things. And by these two things, God cannot, cannot lie. Yeah. Now, Abraham's sitting there, and Abraham didn't have a Bible. No, back then he didn't. Abraham didn't, and I think that that's why, you know, he's called the father of faith mm-hmm. because yeah. he didn't have like these promises that we have to stand on. You know, we're gonna talk of, about a few um, uh, scriptures that Abraham didn't have mm-hmm. to stand on. He is he's meeting God, you know, for the first time, and he's like, okay, you're God, and I've you know heard about right. you, but like, how do I know? You know, how do I know right. this is gonna happen? So let's just look at 
um, some of the verses that we have now to stand on that we can go to mm -hmm. and hold tight to and cling to because it is the word of God. Uh, so let's go to Isaiah 55 chapter 11. And these are the verses that Abraham didn't know. Right. You know and it, it, I would say this, get your phone out and take a quick picture uh -huh. of these verses because they're just great ones to stand on when you feel like your faith is wavering. Yeah. When you feel like you can't be patient like right. Abraham was patient. Right. Uh, Isaiah 55, 11, it says, so shall my word be, this is God, uh, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. God is saying, this thing is not mm. coming back. You're not going to get a bounce check from God. Mm. You're not going to wow. get a bounce prayer request Come from on. God. God is open. God is fully funded. God has everything mm. uh, that you need to take care of you. He's waiting for you to ask. Mm. He's waiting for you to go uh, and open up your mouth. Mm. Um, so speak the word of God because it's not going to return to him void. It's not mm. going to return to you uh, empty. Yeah. Uh, and let's we can go on. And there's so many scriptures, but we're just going to highlight a few uh jeremiah you know tw jeremiah 1 in <laughs> chapter tw verse 1 chapter 12 sorry <laughs> no the other way chapter 1 verse 12 chapter 1 verse 12 <laughs> sorry again uh it says then the lord said to me you have seen well for i am ready to perform my word in a different translation it says i'm waiting over my word to perform it it's kind of like God just waiting for life to be breathed mm. into these words. God's just waiting for somebody to speak it out and he's ready to act on it. Mm. He's ready to do what it, what it is that his word says. Mm. Uh, he's so ready to do it in, in your life. So speak it. Mm. Find, find a promise. Stand on it. Believe it. Speak it out. Mm. And God is, like it says in, in, in this verse, Jeremiah one twelve. I am ready right. to perform my word. Mm. Uh, we can jump to Titus, you know, chapter 1, verse too it says in hope of eternal life uh which god who cannot lie promised before time began let me tell you there was no bible mm -hmm. at, at, at abraham's time you yeah. know there was no bible so god you know he's in this position of having to convince abraham uh of what he can right. do what he wants to do that he will actually do mm -hmm. it that he has the means that he's you know powerful right. enough to make to, to to come through on what he's saying because God's not trying to convince himself. Like he knows right. what he can do. He knows that he's fully able. God's trying to convince Abraham, yeah. you know, at this point. He didn't, and again, Abraham didn't have these promises. He didn't have these scriptures um, to stand on because right. there was no Bible, you know, at the time. So he's trying to convince him with his, with his words, with his actions, with covenant, right. you know, trying to prove to him that not only do I want to do these things, but I can do these things. Mm. That's so good, yeah. And so, like, he wasn't raised in Sunday school, right? Like, he wasn't yeah. raised in these things where, oh yeah, like, oh, oh yeah, God, I know about. No, no, no. Like, you got to think about it. put yourself in Abraham, Abraham's shoes. This God who you may have heard about is now coming, and is meeting with you, and he's telling you to do these things. Yeah. And you're like, who are you? Like, yeah. we we read the story and we know God, right? And so it makes sense to us, it's logical. But this man's stepping out of complete faith, and so God's having to convince him, and so. Mm -hmm. He leaves and he sees and says, oh, I'm going to give you more descendants. And Abraham believes. Mm -hmm. And then he says, okay, I'm going to give you all this land. And Abraham says, but how do I know? Like, yeah. who are you? How do I know that you're actually yeah. going to do this? Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17, like we've already read. God also bound himself with an oath. God, how do I know? Because I'm going to bind myself with an oath. Mm -hmm. So that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. Mm -hmm. God, how do I know? I'm going to put an oath. I'm going to put a covenant in. I'm going to go in a covenant with you. So that way you can be perfectly sure of one thing, Abraham. What, what, God, what is it? What can I be sure of? That I am never going to change my mind. Yeah. Man, how do I know God's going to do it? Because he made an oath. Mm -hmm. And he's never going to change his mind. I know, Sean, but you don't know the things I've done. You don't know the, the places that I've been. You don't know my, my mistakes, my past, the history. You don't know the thoughts that I think. I don't know those things, but I do know covenant. Yeah. And he wanted to make it perfectly clear to you and to me. That he will never change his mind. Yeah. He will never change his mind. Verse 18. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. He gave us his word and then he swore in blood. He yeah. says this. Let these two things convince you of this. That I cannot, I cannot, I cannot lie. God, you can do anything. I know I could do anything, mm -hmm. but I cannot lie. And I will not lie. And so... We were in this kind of like this paradox with with um, with um, 
Abraham and us. Mm. Right? So God came into covenant because he wanted Abraham to be absolutely convinced that what he said he would do, that he's actually going to do. Yeah. Right? And so um, Abraham believed him the first time, right? God, I'm going to give you more. Uh, God said, I'm going to give you descendants. I believe you. Second time, he doesn't believe him. And so now he's now he's stuck and God's like, I'm going to make covenant yeah. to convince you. So Abraham's issue is not our issue. Let right. me explain. Abraham had trouble believing if God, if God, uh, oh, would do it for him right at first like i don't know if you'll do it then he made a covenant all of a sudden abraham never struggled whether god whether god would do it for him he knew that god because god came into covenant and he knows how covenant works that god has to do what he said he's going to do but what he didn't know is this but god can you actually do it Mm -hmm. Like, God, like, are you strong enough to actually give me yeah. this land? Like, God, are you actually strong enough to give me descendants and, yeah. and the numerous of stars? Like, I know for a fact, God, that you will do it. Yeah. I know that you will. I just don't know if you can mm-hmm. do it. I think for us, the issue is backwards. Right. You go to any Christian in America, can God, oh, God can do it. Yeah. Can God, oh, yeah, God can heal me. Oh, yeah, God can do this. Oh, yeah, like, and we're like, yes, God can do it. But will he do it for you? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, God works in mysterious ways, <laughs> you know. Like, I don't know if he wants to do it for me. Yeah. And so we get stuck. But Abraham had the opposite problem. He knew that God would do it. He just don't know if he could. Right. We come in in 2020, and we know God can do it. We just, to be honest, we just don't know if he will mm-hmm. because we've seen things, because we've heard things, because of aunt so-and-so and uncle so-and-so. And I heard this one story and yeah. I, I've seen this thing online and I say, and, and we allow the situation to dictate and to preach to us. Mm-hmm. And God's saying this today. If you know that I can let my covenant and my word solidify it to you today, that I will, yeah. that I will, I will, I will do it for you. Imagine if the promises of God were actually true. Imagine if God had to mm-hmm. actually do what he said he was going to do. Man, wouldn't that change everything? Your healing, mm-hmm. man, your finances, man, like even b- to bless you, re- your relationship, yeah. to give you creative ideas, to give you the mind of Christ. All of these promises, man, what if they were actually true? Mm-hmm. What if he actually had to do what he said he was going to do? Wouldn't that change the way that you pray? Mm-hmm. And every time you cough, wouldn't you pray a little bit differently? Mm-hmm. Man, every time you were struggling, wouldn't you? Man, every time you had no more ideas, every time there was fear that gripped your heart, wouldn't you pray differently? Yeah. Not praying out, oh God, would you be so merciful? But, oh God, didn't you promise me? Yeah. And God, I believe you. You're not you're not saying, God, I'm going to make you do things. No, yeah. no, you're saying this. God, I'm believing what you paid for. Yeah. I'm believing for the covenant that we are in. Right? I, I don't come to, oh, Amanda, would you please, please, please give me a hug? I mean, just please. Would you find, I mean, would you just, I mean, no, she's my wife. Like, babe, give me a <laughs> hug. Like, I want to hug you because I'm in love with you because we're in a relationship. Yeah. I don't have to force her to do it. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't have to force her to do it. We're in a relationship. Man, we're not forcing God to do anything. Yeah. He wants to do it. Right. He swore in blood. He swore in blood to do it. Yeah. Man, imagine, you know, what would happen if mm. those promises came to pass right. in your life? Like, your life would look so different. Our lives would look so different. Mm. Uh, goodness. Um, but let's jump uh, jump over to Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. Mm. Um, and in, in Proverbs uh, chapter 4, verse 20, it says, My son or daughter, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. This is like uh, Proverbs um, is, uh, you know, really just life Mm -hmm. uh, advice, you know, less wisdom, wisdom, just so much wisdom. And, and, and 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 in these scriptures, what's happening is they're telling us, you know, like what, what can we do? Like, how do we stay close to God? And and this is what it's saying. Give attention to my words, incline your ears to my sayings. And so, I mean, if they needed to do it back then, we totally need to do it now. You know, like we need, especially with all the distractions, we, we, so many more distractions I feel like we have now. Uh, we need to give attention to God's words. We need to incline our ears to the things that he's saying. And I want you to pick up on how um, intentional this is. This isn't just like a, 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 you know, oh, one day I'm just going to fall into reading the Bible. Like, 
<laughs> one day I'm just gonna wake up and auto- automatically like have this longing, have yeah. this desire to want to open up, open up my Bible, even though I haven't opened it up in 16 years. Like I'm just gonna wake up. No, it's it's showing us that it takes us into intentionality, this setting time aside, this uh, really leaning in to hear what God has to say, to pay attention. Um, it's this intentional uh, in- intentionality. Um, and, and, and really digging into God's word and finding out what it says, finding out what's hidden in there for you, mm-hmm. finding out what's hidden in there for your family and for your future. Mm-hmm. Um, because I feel like so many times we don't see things uh, change in our life or come to pass in our lives, not because God doesn't want to, because mm-hmm. he's absolutely ready. We read that he's ready to jump. He's ready to perform mm-hmm. his word. But I think it's because we don't know. We don't know what's written in the word. We haven't inclined our ears to his saying. We haven't found out, you know, that, 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 uh, there's life. I mean, and I love what it says at the, at, in verse 22, it says, for they are life. It's talking about God's word for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. It's saying they are life. It doesn't say it gives life. You mm-hmm. know, it says they are life. God's mm-hmm. words are our life well, yeah. they will bring healing to your body they will bring healing to your soul mm-hmm. they will bring healing to any broken area in your life these words are life mm-hmm. it's not like oh i'm just gonna add something to you no i'm gonna give this brand new yeah. life to you this is what the power of god's word does but mm-hmm. let me tell you again uh church it doesn't just happen on accident mm-hmm. it happens with intentionality if you know, you have a hard time memorizing things or if you have a hard time like uh, 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 picking up new habits, set a reminder on your phone. Yeah. You know, that doesn't make you less holy <laughs> because you have to set a reminder. It makes you human. Mm. You know, does it doesn't. Uh, if you have to shut off all the um, put like some controls on your phone so that you don't look at certain apps at, at certain times like I've done, you know, I have to set a limit. Uh, on 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 my social apps or like even on the mm. browser like just to make sure I'm not on there 23 yeah. hours of the day uh, it doesn't make me any less spiritual it makes me human mm. just like it makes you human being distracted doesn't make you any less spiritual it makes you human mm. but we can overcome you know our yeah. humanity with being intentional with setting things up uh, in in place boundaries and all of that stuff so that we can incline mm. our ears uh, and, our, and our heart to, to the word of God. Um, and in verse 21, it says, don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. I have a feeling that it says, don't let it depart from your eyes, talking about the word of God, because it's our inclination, like our mm. tendency to let God's word depart from our eyes. Mm. It wouldn't, I don't think that God would put it in there if it wasn't a tendency of ours you know, to mm. do. God knows you. Mm. God knows us. God knows yeah. how he made us. He knows uh, what, wh- like what we're inclined to and what our tendencies are, but don't let it. Mm. Don't let these things, just because it, just because you deal with it, don't just say, oh, well, I'm always going to be this way. Right. Put safeguards up. Do Absolutely. things um, so that you, you know, you, you, you have the time, you make the time to read the Bible. Cause again, I've never accidentally stumbled upon one day, mm. just reading the Bible out of nowhere. Right. It took intentionality. It wasn't on accident. It wasn't like, Oh, I accidentally opened up my Bible app. Like, mm. no, I set time aside. I said, man, it's been a while, man. God, I haven't talked to you in a minute. I haven't opened up my Bible in a while. I'm going to get over the guilt. I'm going to confess, you know, Lord, please forgive me for being away from you for so long. But I'm going to come back and I'm going to open up my Bible and I'm going to set this time aside for just you and me because I need life. I need your word to build me up. I need mm-hmm. your word to breathe into me, to, to for me to know that you're still there and that I haven't gone too far away. Mm-hmm. And every time, you guys, every time, God will show you that he's there. Mm-hmm. He'll show you that he's, he's waiting for you uh, just to, for him to speak to you. And, and why is he waiting to spy all of our mistakes and our mess ups and our ignoring him? It's, it's yeah. because of this, because, because he made a covenant with you and because he gave his word to swear it to you, man. Yeah. These two things to convince you of this one simple fact that his mind will never change about yeah. you, that he cannot lie. If he made a promise to you, he's going to do his end yeah. and fulfill that promise. Yeah. Obviously there's our end, but he says it's on my end. I am completely convinced. I am not changing my mind yeah. about you. Yeah. So the real quick, a real quick verse here at um, Romans four. Um, we're going to pick it up in verse uh, 20. Uh, 
19. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. It's talking about Abraham talking about his old, old body when he was supposed to have a child at, at an old age. Uh, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's room, womb, who was his wife. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He wasn't going back and forth. Mm -hmm. But he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, verse 21, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Mm -hmm. Talking about God. In other words, saying this, Abraham did not waver in his faith. And how did he not waver in his faith? He actually strengthened his faith. Yeah. How do you strengthen your faith? Check out what Abraham did. He gave glory to God. When it felt like nothing was happening, he gave glory to God. Man, in your situation, when nothing is happening that looks like the promise is coming to pass, that looks like healing is happening, that looks like God's going to provide, that, that looks like, man, I'm feeling better on the inside, yeah. like depression is leaving my body. When it doesn't look like anything happening, are you giving glory to God? Mm -hmm. Or are you giving complaints to God? Sheesh. Or you're letting your mind wander into the enemies, what he wants you to do. Yeah. Or are you saying, God, I'm still going to give you glory. Mm -hmm. Because I know what you said. And this is why he was able to still give God glory. The next, the first four words there in verse 21. And being fully convinced. Mm -hmm. Man, full, why was he fully convinced? Because God gave his oath, yeah. aka his word, and he gave covenant. And he said this, know for a fact that if I promised you, I'm going to do it for yeah. you. Be patient. Hold out. Don't let go. Keep on believing. I'm going to do that thing that I promised to do. Mm -hmm. And real quick, I want to end with a story. In, um, and um, the book of Numbers there's a story where the children of Israel come out of Egypt. And after they come out of Egypt, they go into the um, wilderness. And when they're in the wilderness, they go and they begin to look at this promised land. Now, this is the same promised land that was promised to Abraham centuries and centuries ago. It's promised to them still because that's his seed. And so when he comes, when they come to this land, they uh, uh, Moses asks God if he can send out spies. So God says, send out 12 spies. And they send out 12 spies. And when they come back, two of them come back with saying one thing and 10 of them come back saying another thing. Mm -hmm. And the 10 come back saying this, oh no, the, the two come back and they say, man, we are well able to overcome yeah. them. But the 10 came back and they said this, man, we are grasshoppers in their eyes. Like we are nobody. They're going to crush us. They're going to destroy us. Yeah, the land is just like God said it yeah. would be, but man, they're going to destroy us. And the people, the congregation of people that were there because of what the 10 said, Man, they lost their faith in God. Mm -hmm. And the two try to quickly come back. No, 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 no. God is well able to do it. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're giants, but our God is still, we will overtake them right now. Yeah. Let's go right now. But the 10 convinced them otherwise. Mm -hmm. In other words, saying this to us today, man, what things are we listening to yeah. that, are, that, are, uh, that are convincing our mind that God won't do what he said mm -hmm. he's going to do? Man, the situations that you've been through, yeah. man, your, your history, man, the things that you're seeing on TV, the news and social media. Or maybe it's uh, just uh, people in your life that, have, that, that you've seen go through some things and they'll tell you, well, you know, God, like, you can't really believe. I mean, sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Who knows? God works in mysterious ways. Hmm. God cannot lie. It's not a mystery. He cannot, he cannot, he cannot. Well, Sean, what about, I don't know about those things. All I know is about this. And this says this, I, that God cannot lie because he swore in blood and because he made a blood oath to it. And so I hope today that you get convinced that God wants to do, and he's, he's fully convinced that he's going to do what he promised to do. And so we're going to wrap up right now with a, a quick one-minute takeaway from our message today. So the one-minute takeaway, just as a reminder, it's just one minute for you to, for you to, um, to write down something that God spoke to you during this message. Mm -hmm. It could be, man, I, I, I do need to cut some things out of my life that are speaking death to me. Yeah. Right? I do need to ask God, like, God, like, what, 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 what things should I be putting in? inside like god like what's like the one thing that i should start i need to get yeah. into your word more i need to get this more or whatever it may be whatever god spoke to you uh let's take one minute and uh let's write that down either on paper or your or on your phone or something so that way we can help uh remember what god's saying yeah uh I, right before you guys do that i wanted to remind you of this um uh scripture in romans eleven twenty nine. it says for god's gifts and his call are irrevocable mm -hmm irrevocable meaning they cannot expire they cannot be taken mm -hmm. away you haven't done too many bad things you haven't seen too many bad things this virus mm -hmm. is not taking away the promises that god has for wow. your life uh let me tell you something they're not even put on hold mm -hmm. they're not wow. even put on hold they're not even put on hold i don't know if you know you feel like oh my gosh what am i supposed to do how am i going to come out of this 
be convinced and be rest assured, rest knowing that God sees you, God knows you, God has numbered your days. He knows that uh, the things that are going on and the gifts that he's given you and the call that he's placed on your life, it is irrevocable, mm. irrevocable. It can never expire. It can never be taken away. Um, so I hope that uh, while you're doing your one minute takeaway, that's something that you remember uh, or that you become convinced of as well. So God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your word. Yes, Father, we thank you for your covenant. Father, by these two things that we would be convinced that you cannot, you cannot, you cannot lie, God. Mm -hmm. If you said it, you're going to do it. Yes. Father, will we not treat you like you're a liar anymore? Mm -hmm. Will we not treat you like you're someone who says one thing and then does something else or who promises but doesn't really promise? God, would we take you at your word and at your blood that was that was that was that was uh, that was spilled? So that we, we could come into covenant with you. Yes. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. God, if there's anyone who needs something from God today, would you stick up a hand in your home or in your car, wherever you're listening right now, would you stick up a hand to heaven? Maybe you're feeling lonely and depressed. Maybe anxiety has gripped your heart recently. Maybe your body needs healing. Maybe finances. Maybe your, your relationship with your spouse or a family member is just terrible right now. Man, if you need something from God, would you lift a hand right now, right where you're at? I, I, I just want to pray over you. Father, you see the hands raised. I know we're doing church online, but it doesn't mean that, you, that, you're, that you're online as well. Father, you are here present and filling each and every one of our rooms. And so, God, you see the hands that are raised right now. God, would you meet every need? Father, would you do what you promised, what you promised, what you swore in blood to do? Father, you said, Lord, that by your stripes that we are healed. So I command healing yes. to flood every person's body right now that's raising their hand that needs healing in mm -hmm. their physical body. Be healed in Jesus' name right now. Father, those that, 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 are, that have lack right now because of a loss of job, because of income, because of anything that's been happening, Father, you said that, 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 that you will supply all of our needs. Yes. All of our needs. So, God, would all of our needs be supplied? Those that have lack right now, Father, would their needs be met in Jesus' name? Father, if you want to meet those needs through other people, would you put it on our hearts to not just receive, but to also give? Yes. And so, Father, if, if you need us to give, would you put people on our hearts right now in Jesus' name? To give to those who need. Mm -hmm. Father, the family member or friend, Father, would you put it in our heart where we reach out with a text and meet those needs? Mm -hmm. God, I thank you. God, I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. So, hey, we want to enjoy, uh, uh, invite you mm -hmm. guys to join us next week as we continue this series uh, called Fight Club that we've been on. Uh, next week is going to be uh, another good yeah. um, message that we're excited. But we also want to invite you to... Uh, Zoom to do the Zoom prayer, Zoom, Zoom prayer, <laughs> golly. Um, to with that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All welcome. That. <laughs> Zoom prayer. I'll take over. Zoom prayer is happening right now. Cute. You can log in. The uh, the Zoom ID will be on the slide right after we finish. Um, but before we dismiss, we want to give you the three questions. Yes. Three uh, three questions. The table talk questions. Uh, uh, number one is this: What are the two things that guarantee God cannot lie? Yeah. Uh, number two: What things do we need to cut out because they are destroying faith that God will come through? 
And number three is this, what things do we need to start or keep doing to build our faith? Mm -hmm. Like God's gonna do the things that he promised he's gonna do. So what things we need to cut out, what things do we need to start doing or keep doing? And what are those things that God swore to, um, that, that, that he would keep his word? What are those two things that we talked about? Um, so we love you guys so, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us today. Um, please be uh, praying for our church, the people of our church, um, and that we would be able um, to do exactly what God wants us to do in this season. Nothing yes. more and nothing less. We love you guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.